Hallelujah. God bless each and every one of you. In case you don't know who I am, my name is Reverend Ronald Davis. I'm the pastor of the Word and Life Church, and this is the TV program of the Word of Power Gospel R. We thank the TV program for allowing us to preach the gospel into the city. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. It's a privilege. And I pray I always preach the anointing word of God and the word that God has put in my mouth. I speak only the words that he has put in my mouth. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, hallelujah. How you doing out there? If you don't know Jesus, I want you to come to know him tonight because he wants, he knows you. Sometimes we don't know him, but he knows us. And he knows where we're at in our life, spiritually, naturally, everything. Can I hear an amen? You know, the Lord spoke to me something, and it just really hit me in my heart. God says he's looking for a people that says, yes, Lord, and not why, Lord. You see, too many times God tells us to do something and we say, why? We're too quick to speak. The Bible says in the book of James, be quick to hear, slow to speak. Too many times we're quick to speak and slow to hear. We're backwards. We got the, the cart before the horse. Can I hear an amen? And that's the way us humans are until we get our mind rearranged and get our mind in, li in line with the Word of God and get it conformed to the Word of God. That's what it says in, in uh, Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2, that we are to renew our minds with the Word of God. When you renew your mind with the Word of God, then you start having the mind of Christ. The Bible said in the book of Philippians, let this mind be in you that was in Christ, in Jesus. And the Bible also says we have the mind of Christ. But if you think the thoughts of Christ, you'll have the mind of Christ. And to think the thoughts of Christ, you have to come in line with His Word. Think His Word. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. It's not really hard. We make it hard trying to serve God because we want God to come down and serve Him on our terms and we make our life so hard and miserable instead of seeking God in His will and serving God on His terms, we want God to come down here and serve, serve us on our terms. Don't work like that. You got the cart, you got the cart before the horse again. That's why some of your lives are miserable. You haven't saw God and asked him what he wanted. You wanted him to do what you wanted. We need to repent of that and ask God what's his will. Can I hear an amen? Especially in ministry, in the church. Things that pertain to the church, your position in the body of Christ. We all call and baptize. The Bible says there's one God, there's one spirit, there's one body. We're all baptized into the body of Christ. And we're placed as it pleases God. You're either in, in, in governments or helps or you're called somewhere in the church. You may be a pastor, an apostle. You may be in a five-fold ministry. You may work in the different gifts in the church. But God's called us all to one body. And, and, and he places us as it pleases him. Too many times we place ourselves where we want to be instead of where God's put us and anointed us. Then we cause confusion and the church don't work because that person is not anointed and they're not gifted. Can I hear an amen? To operate in the office they're trying to operate in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, glory. Hallelujah. But I want to say that again and I want to give it to you just as the Lord gave it to me. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. God's looking for a people who will say, yes, Lord, not why, Lord. Just be obedient. Be still and know that I'm God. Hallelujah. Too many times he speaks and we're too quick to say, why, Lord? Why? When we should be saying, yes, Lord, I will be obedient. I will be a humble spirit. Obedient servant, Lord. Jesus was a simple, humble, obedient servant. He did all those things that pleased the Father. He only came to do the will of the Father. Jesus said, this is the meat I'm to eat. It's to do the will of my Father. Jesus always sought the Father. And he always did those things that pleases the Father. And he only did what he saw the Father doing. Jesus was always obedient. He saw it in the Spirit. Then he enacted what he saw. 
Can I hear an amen? It was the Holy Spirit that revealed it to him. Jesus was anointed. Jesus was a man. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit. Just like we're anointed by the Holy Spirit. We have the same spirit that resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead. And we act like, I don't know how I'm getting off on this, but I am. Because we get off sometimes in the church. You have the spirit that resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead. you got the miracle worker, the greater one that indwells within you. And we act like we're orphanless and helpless. You're not relying on the greater one that dwells with inside of you. You got the miracle worker living inside of you. Can I hear an amen? You act like Jesus left and never sent the Holy Spirit back to some of you. And, uh, and you and your negativity and your, your unfruitfulness and your doubtfulness and everything. Repent today. I'm here to encourage you. You have the greater one that lives inside of you. Greater is he than you than him that is in the world. Yea, you little children, you have overcome. He, you got the overcomer inside of you, honey. Hallelujah. You need to start looking unto him instead of looking unto yourself. That's why you fall and fail. Because you're looking unto your own mind, to your own strength. Look unto him. Look unto the all-knowing one, the all-powerful one. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't rely on the Holy Spirit enough. Hallelujah, he's inside of you. We go running from church to church and running here, running there and everywhere because we get a little bit shook because things don't go our way. We go through a little fiery trial and we run to every church rebuking every demon in hell. And, 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 and in fact, if you look into the greater one in you and get quiet and be still and know that he's God, he can speak to you in a still small voice inside and give you direction, give you counsel, give you peace, give you whatever you need. You don't have to run church to church. There's nothing wrong going to your church. We're supposed to go to church, but you don't have to run after anybody when you've got the great almighty one inside of you. Sometimes we look unto man. Jesus said he's the author and finisher of our faith and life. Looking unto Jesus. And if you're looking unto Jesus, the Holy Spirit will point you unto Jesus. Jesus said, my peace leave I unto you. Not as unto the world, but my peace do I leave unto you. In the world when you will have tribulation, but I have given you my peace. He said, I don't give peace unto the world. There'll never be peace in the world. We pray for peace. And we try to make all these peace treaties, but the Bible is plain on that. Jesus said there, I, I do not leave my peace unto the world. There'll never be peace in the world. He said, I leave my peace to my own. So you're praying for something that goes against the grain of God, goes against the Bible. There'll never be a worldwide peace. He said in the world you'll have tribulation. In the world, it talks about Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark chapter 13, the end time sign. There'll be wars and rumor of wars constantly. There'll never be worldwide peace. And the peace treaty and the peacemaker that comes along, the smooth talker, the antichrist that comes along and says there's going to be peace in the world, there's no peace. He's just a smooth talker. And he's going to break his peace treaty with Israel in the middle of the seven-year contract. He's going to break it and attack Israel. So beware of those people. Beware. Can I hear an amen? Believe what God said. Believe what the Bible says. And just because I'm going to throw this in too, because somebody moves in signs and wonders doesn't always mean that it's God. The Bible says try the spirits and see if they be of God. Amen. You need to know if it's the Holy Spirit because the Bible says the devil can work signs and wonders. You shouldn't follow signs and wonders. You should follow somebody as they're following Christ. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Make sure a person's right. Hallelujah. Too many people being led astray and led into cults because they don't know the word of God. They're following signs and wonders and miracles instead of following God and His Spirit and His Word. Can I hear an amen? amen. Too many people convert and they go the other way. Because if you walk in signs and wonders with God, you've got to live a holy, concentrated, righteous life. A godly life. A holy life. Can I hear an amen? So you can get power from the devil. You can live an unholy life and have his power, but to walk with God and to walk in signs and wonders and walk in miracles, you've got to walk in holiness and righteousness because the Holy Spirit is just that. Holy. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. My message tonight is on why we err. Why we err. To err 
means to make a mistake, to be wrong, to go astray, morally, to sin. Matthew 22, 29, he said, You do err not, you do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. Many people err or sin because they don't know God's word. Can I hear an amen? 2 Timothy 3, 16. It says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. The Bible says in James 1, 22, Be ye doers of the word and not just hearers only. Amen? amen. Deceiving yourselves. Verse 23 through 25. Uh, and then Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 it says whoso heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock that's verse 25 through 27 can I hear an amen hallelujah get a little feedback here and turn the keyboard off hallelujah hallelujah <coughs> People that don't know the word of God sin because they don't know God's word. God's word is his will. How can you know his will if you don't know his word? That's why so many people err. That's why so many Christians err. You go to the home, the Bibles are laying with, ran with dust on them. Never, never been cracked, never been opened. Not everyone, but some. And then they wonder why they err. They go astray. Hallelujah. <clears throat> They sin because they are ignorant of the Word of God. If you don't know the Word of God or His laws, these are His laws and commandments that we are still obey today. The Bible says that Jesus sent back, the, the Lord sent back the Holy Spirit to help us write His laws in our heart, to help us to obey the laws of God. Amen? How we can obey the laws and word of God if we don't know it? This is why people err. They don't know the Word of God. They don't know the will of God. Romans 6, 23, it says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Until you repent, until you repent, then you're his righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. John 8, 32, it said, Jesus said, If you continue in my word, in other words, obey it, walk in it, then are you my disciples indeed. In other words, if you continue in my word, if you walk in it, if you obey it. And then verse 32, it said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. If you don't know God's word and obey it and walk in it, you won't be free. You will be a servant of sin. Romans 6, chapter 6, verse 12, 13, 16, 18. It says, to whoever, whoever we yield our members to, that's who will, we will be servants of. If you yield your members unto unrighteousness, you will be a slave and a servant unto sin. Hallelujah. Excuse me, people, I have to turn this down a little bit. I'm getting feedback. Hallelujah. Well, Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a little better. Hallelujah. If you yield your members unto righteousness, then you will be righteous. You'll be a slave unto righteousness. Amen. Paul said, I want to be, I'm a slave of Jesus Christ. If you're a slave unto him, you'll be a slave unto righteousness. Amen. Now, you can either <clears throat> yield your members unto sin, unrighteousness, or you can yield your members to holiness, righteousness. That's a choice and a decision that is up to you. And the reason many times we err is because we yield our members, we yield our wrong members. You can, you're, uh, take for an example, your mind is a member, okay? Yielding your mind to sin and sinful thoughts. The Bible says plainly to think upon them things that are holy, righteous, pure, and of good report. If you yield your mind to stuff and garbage and clutter like pornography and everything else like that, you're yielding your member unto sin, which eventually, if you act upon it, the Bible said in the book of James that, that if you act upon the sin, then you sin. To think upon it, you need to get rid of it. Amen. 
Because it will eventually, if you play with and entertain those sinful thoughts, they'll take you over and you'll act on it. And then when you act upon it, the Bible says it brings forth death. Sin brings forth sin, and sin brings forth death. Then you have to repent to become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus again. And you'll yield your members back again unto righteousness. Can I hear an amen? Am I making sense to anybody out there? I hope so. Hallelujah. To err, talking about to err, to sin, why we do it, why we sin, especially if you're a Christian. Hallelujah, you can be a Christian and sin. And, and I'm going to tell you something today. I, I'm going to preach you the plain truth. The Bible says whenever Jesus went to, up to the Passover in Jerusalem, and he went up to the temple, and they were sitting there, and they was having the Last Supper. The Bible says he broke the bread, and he sopped it, and he gave it to Judas. And the Bible says when he did that, the devil entered into Jesus. Can you entertain a devil? Can you have a devil? What was, Ju what was Judas? He was an apostle to walk with Jesus. He moved in signs and wonders and in power. But his flesh sold him out because of money. And the Bible said the devil entered into him. If you remember the story one time, can you err? Can you, can you uh, yield your members to unrighteousness? Sure. Jude, uh, Peter was an apostle and they was walking down the road one day and, and Jesus said, who do, who, who do men say that I am? Some say you're uh, John the Baptist or some say you're Elijah, you're John the Baptist, come back to life. And, and, and he looked at Peter and said, who do you say I am, Peter? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, I'm proud of you, Peter. He's patting him on the back one second and, and get this, and the next second he's rebuking him. Watch this. And, and, and then he says, uh, uh, I'm, I'm proud of you, Peter, because you did not get that from man, but you got a revelation from my father. And then they're going down the road, and, and he said, I must go to Jerusalem, and then I must be crucified and die, and on the third day I'll be raised. Oh, no, Lord, you can't go die. You can't go die. Peter said this. He's getting patted on the back one minute. He's getting rebuked the next. He said, get behind me, Satan. You savor those things that be a man. So you see, you can be blessed one minute and be patted on the back by the Lord one minute, and over here the next minute you can be getting rebuked. But Jesus said in Revelation chapter 2, as many as I love, I rebuke to the church of Ephesus. Revelation chapter 2. He says, as many as I love, I rebuke. So if he rebukes you, he loves you. See, one minute he's getting patted on the back, the next minute he's getting rebuked. But it helped him get back into the will of God. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. If we don't know God's word, hallelujah, we'll be a slave of sin. Hallelujah. It's a, a decision. You have to make a decision and a choice either to know God's word and obey it and be free or sin and be a slave of sin. Then you will be a slave to the devil. He will control you. He is the author of sin. 2 Timothy 2.26 and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Give you scripture, not but the word of God. Who are taken captive by him at his will. You see, if you yield your members to the devil, he's going to take you captive. The word of God says it. This word is to God's people. It's not to the world. The world don't read a Bible. They don't know a Bible. They don't know what's in the Bible. It's to you. It's to Christians. It's to his people. They are already taken captive by the devil. Jesus said over in John chapter 8, he said, he told the Pharisees and scribes, the religious people, he said, I'm of my father, you, of your, you are of your father, the devil. For he was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. That's who you're of. He said, I speak for my father, you speak for your father. Who are you of today? You can be of the devil or you can be of God. Come on. You can talk like the devil one minute, talk like God the next minute. The Bible says... Bitter waters, sweet waters, and bitter waters can't come forth out of the same mouth. Can I hear them in? You can speak blessing or cursing. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're not born again, the devil is your father. Simple as that. If you want God, Jehovah, 
God Almighty to be your father today and you want to get out of the family you've been in, if you're not sanctified Christian, if you're not been born again by the Spirit of God today, I'm going to tell you how to get out of the family you're in. The Bible says Satan has taken you captive. He's the author of sin. That's why you're out there sinning. You can't get out of it. You don't have power over Satan to get out of that sin. But I'm going to tell you about a power today that will get you out of sin. Today, the power of Jesus Christ. John 10, 10 says a thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy but I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. 1 John 3 8 says he the sentence is of the devil and this is why the son of God was manifested that he destroy the works of the devil and God wants to destroy the works of the devil and lose you and let you free today. If you're a Christian or not a Christian, hallelujah. Too many times Galatians chapter 5 1 it says uh, uh, to stand fast in the liberty wherefore Christ has set you free and do not turn back into the world again. Many Christians have turned back to the beggarly elements of the world again. Can I hear an amen? They've turned back into the world again. They've fallen back into sin again. But there's hope for you and come back today. God loves you and just like the prodigal son, he wants you to come back and get in the house. I'm talking about sin today. That's, that's not, not a very popular subject in the church. But the church better get on the ball and start preaching about sin in the house again. And preach it out of the house. That's why it's not out of the house. Because we ain't preached it out of the house. You preach it out of the house and people get free. Hallelujah. They'll get convicted and come up to the altar. No, you want to preach your prosperity messages. You want to preach your your goody goody little feel good messages. But honey, that ain't being the bishop of their soul. Pastor, be the bishop of your people's souls. Hallelujah. Or you're going to account to God one day. Hallelujah. Why people fell into sin and backslid and you didn't preach the truth to them. You didn't preach about sin. You didn't preach it out of church. You can't help but people stay in sin after you preach to them. But if you don't preach it, they don't know. Hallelujah. The Word of God is for reproof, instruction, and righteousness. Remember I said that in 2 Timothy. If you're not preaching and giving instruction and righteousness, how are they going to err? you got to maintain a balance in the church and preach about sin. Preach it out. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 9 through 12 and 13. Just ask Jesus to come to your heart and life. Hallelujah. Then you won't err when you start walking with him, learning his word and walking in compliance and obedience to his word. Hosea 4, 6, it says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected, rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of God, the word of God. I will also forget thy children. When you don't know and obey the word of God, he will reject you for rejecting his word. I'm going to say it again. He will, when you don't know the word of God and try to obey it, he will reject you. For rejecting his word. Amen. And if you're a Christian, you're in sin. He said right here, Thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of God and keeping it. Yeah, you know what the Bible says? We're a priesthood, a royal chosen generation. We're a priesthood under God. He's the high priest. We're a priest in our home. The man is the priest in your home. He is the high priest. Jesus Christ is the high priest. You are the priest. He said right here, God won't even answer your prayers when you're in sin and you err because he said, Thou shalt not be no priest to me. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's go on down here. Jesus said that those who, hallelujah, I was talking about over here, Matthew 7, 24, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine doeth them, I will liken them to a wise man which built his house upon a rock. People don't know the word of God and the sin. They sin because they don't know God's word. You have to obey it. They sin because they are ignorant of the word. Hallelujah. If you don't know God's word and laws, how can you obey them? Romans 6, 23 says the wages of sin is death. You're separated from God until you repent. Jesus said to walk in the word, to continue in his word. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. The Bible says in Isaiah 5.13, Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, holy knowledge of what his word. James 5.20 says if you're an heir, and, and hallelujah, let's go over here to James 5.20. 
Let's go over here real quick. James 5.20. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. James 5.20. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. James 5.20. Let him know that he which covers the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall have a multitude of sin. Verse 19. Brethren, if, him, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converts a sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. I'm here today to tell you, are you an heir today? Are you in sin today? You can be a Christian in heir or sin. And I want to tell you today, the Bible says, he that converts a sinner, I want you to get converted today and turn from the errors of your way because you went astray. You went astray from God's way. If you're a sinner out there today and you don't know Jesus, say, Lord Jesus, I know you love me. So I, I, I really do know that in my heart. I ask you to come into my heart and life and forgive me of my sin. Your word declares and says that if I, I believe in my heart that you died for my sins and you was resurrected on the third day, that if I believe it in my heart and confess with my mouth unto righteousness and believe my heart unto righteousness and confess unto my mouth unto salvation, I shall be saved. Ask Jesus to come into your heart, wash you clean and forgive you your sins today. Ask you to turn you from the heirs, and from you have one astray that was in the church, and you have one astray. Ask God to turn you from the heirs of your ways today. Say, so Lord Jesus, I'm a Christian, and I should be following you, and I know I haven't. Ask you to forgive me, and forgive me of my heir that I have one astray my own way. Help me to get back in your way and to follow you. If you don't know Jesus today, get in church and serve him. Find your church somewhere. Pray about it. Let God bless you. He wants to take you to heaven and miss hell. Can I hear an amen? If you've erred today and, and, and you went astray from the Lord, just ask him to forgive you and come back and he will. Can I hear an amen? We love you and I pray I've blessed you today and some of you have gotten back on track for Jesus. Can I hear an amen? God bless you. We'll see you next program.